Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to call to order to the Good. Board of Supervisors at approximately 10 a.m. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. I can only do it once. <laughs> Are we doing it now? <laughs> Won't comment on that. Thank you. That was a good one. You guys are big. Yeah, well, <laughs> younger man. <Michael. laughs> well, he's not in that group. I know. Obviously, I am. Yeah. By yourself. Really? <laughs> okay, we have 20 present, have one excuse. <laughs> Presentation of the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recognition. Presentation of years of service plaque to Richard Weisgerber. Rich is a no show, I guess. So. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, Rich Weisgerber uh, retired April 28th. He was uh, almost a 41-year employee with the Door County Highway Department, uh, so I wanted to thank him for his years of service. Uh, served a lot of roles for the Highway Department over those 40, 41 years. Uh, a lot of different roles and responsibilities, being just a, a starting off as just a regular worker, moving up into management about 12 years ago. Uh, but he was uh, uh, two months short of his 40, 41st anniversary as a county uh, employee. Uh, did a great job for him. So, when you see Rich, thank him. I'll do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Correspondence. We have the unassigned fund balance. If there's any questions? Public comment. Does anybody care to make a public comment? No supervisor response. Approval of the minutes of the April 18th, 2017 regular meeting. Yeah, I know. I read it. Motion to approve. Second. It. Changes, additions, corrections. I had one. I had one change or correction under um, re re review and re revise the rules of order. Um, what, what page? Oh, what page? Page three. 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 Near metal. Um, yep. Under supervisor zones, of course, it's got to be mine. Um, <laughs> uh, I just wanted it maybe to be corrected that that sentence, second sentence, um, let's see, I got to. Um, I guess I'd like to have it say that whatever the traveled route. You know, I mean, it's not always from work to home. Sometimes it's from home to home, and sometimes it's from work to work. So I guess I don't know how to correct that, but I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that I don't want it to the, I want it to be whatever way it is for the day. Not, you know, and that was my understanding of your discussion was right. actual location. Right. Not trying to make any more out of it than what, what it is. Okay, so what specifically would you like it to say that you want us to correct? You can mark something down. I'll, let, I'll leave questions. it to Joel's discretion, but I think uh, she understands what I'm saying. For the day to the meeting is what I'm understanding. So that could be different every month. Well, work versus home can vary depending on the meeting yeah. time. So actual location for the meeting day to the meeting is what you want them to review. Right, but whether it's work or home, I'm not saying from, you know, if I'm... going to use the word actual location. Regardless, I'm not using work or home. Actual starting location, then you're going to have to come up with words that you want me to use. I don't know how to interpret what you're asking. What's your definition of work? So, uh, Steve. I'd Hammersmith TV okay. and Sister Bay. 
<laughs> so this, this is going to continue to be discussed by the admin committee. I guess what I would say if I read this sentence related to mileage reimbursement, question the reimbursement paid by the most usual travel route. So we understand you're questioning that and that you want it paid differently and that's what we will do at the admin committee, admin committee is review that. Yeah. As long as everybody understands what I was trying to get across because, you know, the, the pulse quoted kind of misquoted me at yeah. the way that was done and I just wanted to make it clear. The minutes, minutes can stand as long as you know, everybody understands. Steve and I have had this discussion before, but I think you ought to add something to the fact that exists in Door County. You know, so well, someone yeah, doesn't come not, home from uh, right. but we're not Miami about, for the weekend. And, but we're talking about the minutes. We're not talking about okay. the changes. Just remember yeah. that when we come to do that. It, yeah. We can leave it as it is, as long as everybody, and I just want to make sure everybody understood <coughs> what I was getting at. Okay. All right, anybody else? Yeah. Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Pending business and updates. I have, I'm using old technology today because my surface is having some problems. Bear with me. <laughs> Resolution 2017-35, payment due ETF for unreported WRS service and earnings for prior years. Kathy, would you like to? This is payment due ETF for unreported WRS service and earnings for prior years. And I'll make a motion to adopt. I'll second. Discussion? Explanation. Explanation? I can do an explanation if you'd like. Yes, please. So I'll do an explanation so you all understand what you're voting on. Um, uh, individual employee within EMS had sent an email. We, uh, and Mark has the exact dates. He can back me up. But it was last year that they believed um, that they were actually a qualified employee to be in the WRS at an earlier date. Um, when we got that email, uh, we initially started to do some research in terms of, I guess, how the hours were actually coded into our system. What we did is we learned that the hours, um, that, <clears throat> well, let's put it this way, when you, sometimes when a person's on call, the on call hours do not count towards your year or your hours of service for WRS. But if the individual actually comes in and works those hours, those hours count. Long story short, what happened is that the hours were coded in as on call, even though they were in the office working. So what we had to do is we had to go back and do the research. And what we did is we did all the employees um, going back within EMS to 2009. And what we found is that there were numerous individuals that would, had qualified for WRS. And based off of that, we then went through and we worked with WRS. We disclosed the situation and explained what had happened. We went through and did all the calculations. And in essence, we uh, are required to, in essence, enroll them from that data period, but then also provide the funding that they would have received for WRS going back to that date and time. So one individual went back to 2009. Some of them varied based on when they started. In any case, uh, the way it worked out is that we will have to reimburse WRS for that period of time from approximately 2009 to 2016. We have had, obviously made the correction within our time system for that. And there was extra three portions. So there was the county contribution, there would have been the employee contribution, depending on when that started, and then there's obviously the, the interest related to that. In other words, what were their earnings on those contributions from when they contributed those dollars? What we're doing is we're actually going to pay the, obviously, the employer portion of the WRS, plus we're also going to pay the interest because it's our mistake and actually how we coded the hours. So it's not fair to make the employee pay for the interest related to that. For the employee portion, we're going to be working with our existing employees 
to set up a payment plan to recover those funds because that's their contribution. And for the ones that are, I believe there's two employees that are no longer employed, we will work with them also to try to make a collection for those dollars. So anyways, long story short, we're going to make a upfront payment, the county will, to WRS, so that way our accounts are all flush and we're not having to recalculate interest and all the other stuff. So we'll make that payment back. And then in essence, we will recover the funds, as I explained back, from the employees for their portion. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Is that Mark, can you think of anything I missed in the explanation for that? Oh, that's right. And then as we receive payments back from the employees, those payments back will go back into the payroll contingency. Yep. Yep, I'll, I'll repeat it back. I apologize. So, again, the other part of the question is, so of that $78,000, where is that coming from? We'll take that out of our payroll contingency. Um, and there are funds to cover that. And once we start getting payments back from the employees, their payments will go back into that contingency account. So, and that's how that would be handled. And again, I think the important thing here is that obviously from the standpoint is, you know, what caused the error. The error again was this and how we, I guess, coded the hours. And the question is as well, how did we address the error? And now we address the error because we set up different account codes within our time system, which is called Ceridian. Um, and those are actually now tracking all the hours properly and that way we monitor the correct functions for the WRS. Steve, just a little curious on this payback, um, especially for the, for the employees that are no longer here. How are we doing that to make sure we get paid back? Because it sounds like we're just going to go forward and pay everything with the hopes that they're going to pay us back. Sure. So if there's a situation where an employee chooses not to pay back their portion, whether they're employed or not employed, well, if they're employed, we're going to set it up because they're employed with us so we can actually, it right, off. right. But if they would choose not to, what we can do is as long as we document that we went through the process of trying to collect those funds and if we don't get those funds collected or if they correspond saying, sorry, I'm not going to pay you guys back, then what we do is we actually notify um, the WRS and they will actually make an adjustment to that individual's account and, they'll, and then in essence will be made whole back from WRS and that's to actually taken out of their account or tracked in that way. Is that correct in that sense, Mark? Okay, I just want to make sure I explain that right, but yes. Either way, we have to go through that process, at least trying to show that we made the process to actually collect the funds. Sure. And as long as we have it documented that either they refused or are not submitting payment, then we let WRS know and then that's how it's handled for those individuals. Okay, good. Anybody else? If not, we'll go to the voter board. passed on a vote of 20 yes. We are going to move down to item 13, special reports. QPR <coughs> suicide prevention with Sue Powers and Katie Van Lannan. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting us to talk today about QPR suicide prevention. Um, my name is Sue Powers. I'm a public health nurse. I've been at the health department 11 years. And I'm Katie Van Lynn, and I've been with the, I'm also a public health nurse, and I've been with the health department for four years. So the first thing we want to explain is that um, our work with suicide prevention <coughs> in the community is a collaborative effort with a group called Prevent Suicide Door County Nathan Wilson Coalition. In 2010, a young man named Nathan Wilson died by suicide at age 25. By the, year, the next year, 2011, his mother Cheryl Wilson had formed the coalition 
and they were already beginning to provide suicide prevention education in our community. <coughs> I am so grateful that Cheryl started the coalition and I really admire her efforts. I know firsthand that um, getting any kind of community effort going for a cause is really difficult and I can't imagine starting this one because nobody wants to talk about suicide. So Prevent Suicide Door County Nathan Wil Wilson Coalition is the group which has taken the lead in providing what's called QPR, Question, Persuade, Refer, Suicide Prevention Education in the county. And then just about the same time in 2011, the health department had the community needs assessment. And that assessment revealed mental health to be a top area of concern, the top area in fact. A main factor was a high suicide rate in Door County. The data revealed that in the four years studied, our suicide rate here was higher than the state average. Our 2016 community needs assessment revealed the same kind of data, that the suicide rate in Door County remained higher than the state rate um, in the most recent data available. So that was for the years 2007 to 11. And we'll talk a little bit more about data later. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that since 1990 in the United States of America, suicide has, the rate of suicide has just continued to increase. So we formed, the health department formed a work group called the Mental Health Focus Group of interested community members, some of them professionals. Mark Miller is a member of that. Thank you, Mark. For our first project, the group formulated the Door County Mental Health Crisis Prevention and Resource Guide. And our wanting to do that was to increase access to services in our county. So this is what a hard copy of that looks like. Um, there's a bunch of these on the back table if anybody wants a hard copy. The other way to get this information is on the Door County government website. And I gave you each a little business card that, well, you know where that website is, but directs you to our link. And we update this annually, um, as well as in between if somebody provides us with new information about what's available. Um, another of our group's goals, the Mental Health Focus Group, has been to reduce the incidence of suicide. And we support the efforts of the Prevent Suicide Door County Nathan Wilson Coalition. So Katie and I are members of that group, and Cheryl Wilson is a member of the Mental Health Focus Group. This creates a collaborative impact that's really bigger than each group could provide on its own. Other mental health focus group goals include promoting mental health awareness and reducing stigma of mental illness. So last year, Katie and I, along with two members of Prevent Suicide Door County, got trained in an eight-hour course as QPR presenters. Also. Within the last couple of years, uh, children's mental health has become a big issue across the state. And maybe some of you read the Press Gazette articles and the articles in the papers in the Fox Valley about mental health concerns in children and lack of resources, that type of thing. So because of this, for the last two years, the Maternal Child Health State Initiative has been children's mental health. So what that means for our local health department is that some of our funding um, is dependent on our activity in things that have to do with children's mental health. So long story to say some of our funding goes for QPR, for our efforts in QPR. And we have to report back to the state on what we're doing um, and QPR qualifies as one of those activities. And last year when we attended the QPR trainers course, it's a $400 course and those fees were paid by the Maternal Child Health State Initiative. So, what is this QPR that we're talking about? It stands for Question, Persuade, Refer, and like CPR, QPR is an emergency response to someone in a suicide crisis. So an actual QPR training is an hour-long training. We're just going to give you a little commercial today, um, some of the basics. 
QPR is an evidence-based program. It was started in 1995 by someone named Dr. Paul Quinette, PhD, in the state of Washington. And he started this effort because he was involved in working on a local crisis hotline and he took the calls and he really felt like we need to be doing more. In a statement from the QPR Institute, um, we're told that as a form of violence, suicide around the world claims more lives than all the wars combined. I'm just gonna say that again. As a form of violence, suicide around the world claims more lives than all the wars combined. So the catchy name QPR is supposed to remind you of CPR because like CPR, the chain of survival from a life-threatening medical crisis, early recognition of warning signs, early intervention, and early professional assessment can save lives. I want you to think about who usually does CPR. It isn't a cardiologist usually, right? They're not walking down the street when someone collapses. So that's the same thing with QPR. It's a passerby, it's a friend, it's a neighbor who's going to do QPR. It isn't going to be a mental health professional, usually. Um, Q CPR has changed the death rate from a medical crisis, and we're hoping that QPR can change the suicide rate. So I, I hope you can see this little cartoon in the back. There's a man out there, or a guy, person out there drowning. And the lifeguard is saying, we're encouraging people to become involved in their own rescue. So that's pretty hard when you're nearly over your head and emotions are a mental health issue. It's extremely difficult to reach out and ask for help. And Q, so QPR gets around that. It addresses high-risk people in their own environment, does not require suicidal people to reach out and ask for help. Um, in a QPR training, we talk about raising awareness regarding suicide, dispelling myths, misconceptions. We give you basic skills to save a life, and we try to end stigma around this issue. So as long as suicide remains a mystery, we have no responsibility, right? But there's been a lot of studies. Um, we have data, knowledge, and now we can prevent suicide. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in our country for the age group 15 to 24. So for those young people, it's the second leading cause of death. The first leading cause of death in that age group is um, accidents, such as motor vehicle accidents. <coughs> suicide is the 10th leading cause of death overall among persons in our country. And I think that others in the top 10, we've heard a lot more about things like heart disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease, those kind of things. You know, there's commercials, there's organizations, there's all kinds of information. So why do people die by suicide and, and what do we know about it? Um, white males, age 45 to 60, is the most common suicide. Firearms, most common method for men. Any guesses about the most common method for women? Yeah, pr probably as you guess, poisoning, overdose. And uh, actually men die by suicide four times more than females do. It could have to do with the means. There's no delay with a firearm. So here's something interesting. More densely populated areas have lower suicide rates. So where does that leave us, right? Um, it is said that when pain exceeds resources is when suicide occurs. So we're a rural area, area, and that probably has a lot to do with why our rate is higher. This is the most recent data. In 2014, there were, across our country, there was 41,000 suicide deaths, 16,000 homicide deaths, yeah, what do we hear more about, right? We hear about those homicides. There's when actually there's over twice as many suicide deaths. For youth, again, for youth and young adults, suicide is the second leading cause of death in the United States. In Wisconsin, youth suicide rate is a third higher than the national rate. Suicide disproportionately affects veterans. 
And here's something that gives me a lot of hope that we have learned that 64% of people who attempt suicide visit a doctor in the month before their attempt and 38% in the week before. That's across the country. So that gives us a lot of hope for education. Um, you know, now that we know that, we can, we can work with this issue better. The truth is anyone can die by suicide regardless of age, race, financial status, any, anything like that. In the U.S., there's one suicide every 12.3 minutes. So as Sue mentioned, our training, our QPR trainings are one hour in length. So during every training, five people will die by suicide. And, and we were here to present to you for 15 minutes, so one person will die by suicide while we're here talking. It's also equivalent to 117 suicides per day. And that's about the same amount of people that fit in a commercial jetliner. And so imagine if a commercial jetliner full of people crashed every single day. Mm -hmm. well, there'd be a lot of commotion. That's not the case with suicide. So this map shows us that from 2007 to 2011, Door County had a suicide rate of 14.5 per 100,000 people. Fast forward a couple years, from 2009 to 2013, the Wisconsin state suicide average per 100,000 people was 13.2. Door County's rate was 14.9. And let's compare a few other counties. Brown County, 12.3. Milwaukee County, 10.7. Manitowoc County, 14.0 and Dane County 12.6. We like to think that suicide is not a problem we have to deal with up here, but the fact is suicide, um, our statistics show that our county has a rate of suicide higher than the state average. Suicide is a concern. And it's estimated that there are about 25 suicide attempts for every documented suicide death. And so that's about a million attempts annually. Surrounding suicide, there are many myths. And so one of our goals is to shed the light on some of these myths. There's a myth out there that no one can stop a suicide. It's inevitable. But the fact is, if people in a crisis get the help that they need, they will probably never be suicidal again. Another myth is that confronting a person about suicide will only make them angry and increase the risk of suicide. But the truth is, asking someone directly about suicidal intent opens communication, lowers anxiety, and lowers the risk of an impulsive act. And studies have been done on all age groups, and they found that it's just a relief to have someone ask, which is what QPR is all about. Another myth is that once a person decides to complete suicide, there's nothing, anything anyone can do to stop them. But the truth is, suicide is the most preventable kind of death, and almost any positive action may save a life. And you notice I use the word complete, not commit. And that's because that word commit carries lots of stigma. If you think of the word commit, it sounds like you committed a crime. So not only does that person feel like they're committing a crime, but the family members left behind feel stigma that their loved one committed a crime. So I challenge you guys, don't say committed suicide, or he or she is crazy, insane, sick, or so bipolar, or just get over it, or that they are so selfish. But instead say, 
that they died by suicide, completed suicide, or he or she lives with bipolar disorder or depression. When you apply QPR, you plant the seeds of hope, and hope more than anything else can prevent the unnecessary tragedy of suicide. If a person doesn't die by suicide, all things become possible. I'd like to tell you um, about two upcoming QPR trainings that we have. One is tonight, the 23rd, at the Boys and Girls Club from 6.30 to 7.30. And that will be two other trainers from Prevent Suicide Door County Nathan Wilson Coalition. And you have that at your place. There's also a training June 27th at Bayview Lutheran Church from 6 to 7. And Sue and I will be doing that training. Does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions in the future, please come to a training or um, contact us at any time. Sue? Sure. If a person did want to come to one of these, do they need to let you know ahead for materials and things? Or no. can people just show up? Just show up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sue and Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next resolution 2017-36, committee appointments for the Board of Adjustment. I'll make a motion that we approve the appointments. Second. Sure, so this uh, uh, just quick background, I know Mariah is here, but um, obviously for that area, we for the Board of Adjustments, we need to reappoint. You can see the individuals that are listed there. I know Mariah worked with the individuals uh, two are the renewed appointments for the regular members, and we have a, a new appointment as an alternate, first alternate. And again, on the back side of the re resolution, Exhibit A, you have some of their background uh, experience related to, um, I guess, their experience related to being able to be on the committee. So. Question? We'll do this by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I will mention that I was remiss in not getting two appointments on our agenda for today, so it'll be next month, and that will be Roy Engelbert for Board of Health and Laura Wadichek for the Sister City uh, Program. <coughs> Resolution 2017-37, the Wisconsin Conservation Reserve Enhancement <coughs> Program Contract. Mr. Fisher? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion we adopt Resolution 2017-37. Second. Uh, I believe Aaron is in here. Yes, Aaron will come up and explain this in detail for us. Good morning. Good morning. Taking no more than 25 minutes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can everyone hear me okay? Um, so the purpose of this resolution is to allow us to enter into a contract with the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection. And by engaging in this contract, we'll be able to offer uh, another conservation <coughs> tool to landowners who have agricultural land um, adjacent to sensitive resources. So essentially, this allows us to enter into those agreements. It's a nationwide program that's part of the Conservation Reserve Program. This is the state portion of it, so it's abbreviated to CREP. Um, landowners receive incentive payments and uh, uh, and a, a payment at the time that they enroll in this program. The agreements are usually 15 years or can be in perpetuity. So again, this um, contract allows us, our department to work with the state and the federal government to offer this program in Door County it's from the town of Sturgeon Bay South. Questions? Linda. Aaron, have, has your department identified certain environmentally sensitive areas that might be eligible for this? And then the landowners are paid an annual rental 
developed or whatever, right? right. So the sensitive areas are typically streams, and the practice to be installed would be a riparian buffer. So leaving, uh, usually it's 40 feet. It can go up to 150 feet away from the stream. Mm -hmm. And you have some areas in mind that you would use this? Yes, there are some landowners that are currently enrolled in agreements and their 15 year time period is coming up and this would allow us to re-enroll those properties. Thank you. Sue? Did I hear you say that this is only Town of Sturgeon Bay South? Yes. And why is that? Why and is that area was identified by the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection and they the whole state is not eligible to participate in this program. And so by identifying those areas where there were sensitive streams that were on the impaired waters list, they identified where in each county this program could be applied. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Erin. Okay. We will go to the voter board since this involves funds. That has passed on 18 yes, two no, and one absent. Resolution 2017-3A, a resolution supporting the WOOF goal of 350 or less in Wisconsin. Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'll make a motion to adopt <coughs> resolution number 2017-38. I'll second it. This came to me uh, and I brought it up to LCC for follow-up. Uh, you can see on line 15, it says uh, 34 counties in Wisconsin have passed the resolution uh, so far uh, seeking <coughs> acceptable levels for the wolf population uh, based on uh, 22, line 22, 23, and 24. Uh, where they talk about uh, it's resulted in uh, uh, lowering the deer population uh, where the wolves are plentiful, reduced hunting opportunities, curtail livestock and pleasure horse activities, and are a danger to pets and people. And uh, it, it's one of those, uh, I don't know if you could call it a feel-good resolution, but it's, it's uh, the counties are getting on board uh, wanting to push for this to get the wolf uh, 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 situation under the control of Wisconsin and not the federal government to, to decide what we're doing here. So. Megan. Ken, do you have any more details in regards to in the control of Wisconsin versus the federal government? I, I, I read the, the wolf article in um, in uh, one of the publications that we received monthly. I think that was last month or the month before. Is that the same one I have here? Yeah, more than likely. Beautiful picture on the front. Yeah. Beautiful animal. We had a, uh, let's see if I can, uh, I've got it here. Uh, I'm not gonna, if you're asking for it, I'm not gonna go through this. No, one. I have the article and I've read the article. This? I'm, okay. I'm wondering uh, what the, I, I guess I'm not recalling any differentiation between federal law and state law on that, and I just may not be recalling it, and I'm hoping you can enlighten me. No, in that, no, I don't, the right offhand. But we had a report on this uh, last month when we went to the Land and Water State Conference. They brought up uh, uh, about the number of wolves around, <coughs> uh, acknowledged that the wolf, yeah, this is DNR, acknowledging that the wolf population is, uh, uh, it's not two or three counties up north. It's all over. I know I've seen five wolves in Door County myself. Uh, I saw them on my property at home and we live in the city. So, uh, and I know what a wolf looks like. It wasn't a coyote or a fox or anything. <laughs> they were wolves. So they're here and they're spreading and uh, the fear is that they will do 
damn, there's a reason. I'm not advocating eradicating them, but there is a reason they were eradicated in the, what is it, the 1910s, 1920s? So uh, I'm not pushing for that, and neither are these people. They're just saying, let's maintain uh, what would be considered a viable population. No, I, I understand all of that. I'm, I'm wondering what the portion is between uh, state law and federal law that you mentioned. Why we're trying to get this under the control of Wisconsin rather than federal law is what I was looking for oh. clarification on. Um, and that being said, since you brought it up, I do fully understand that, uh, as with many animal populations, the wolf population is um, likely something that um, needs to be controlled. Um, obviously, for the reasons mentioned here, I'm I'm not. After reading, after doing the research that I've done, I'm not fully um, confident that that is the correct number, um, or that we should necessarily be um, supporting <coughs> this without without further clarification on that. So, I just wanted to make that statement. Susan, um, I'm getting pushback on this resolution from people in my district who have concerns that the number is kind of an arbitrary number and not based on a lot of research, um, comments that we, for example, have this huge deer population and when you start controlling the predator, um, then you have other unwanted effects. So I guess I just share that, that there are a number of people out there who are very concerned about, about us picking this arbitrary number that maybe isn't based on as much research as, uh, and I don't know, I don't know. I, I don't know if it is or not, but I just share that, that that's out there. Linda. Um, yeah, we, we, Wisconsin has gone back and forth. First, we had too many wolves and then they were totally extinct in Wisconsin and then they were brought back and now we're to too many wolves. Uh, I agree with Super, Supervisor Cohart that um, I'm not sure that we have all the statistics on this to make um, a decision at this time. I think we have to put some kind of faith in our biodiversity and the importance of an ecosystem. And it's not nice to mess with Mother Nature sometimes. Us humans always think we know what's best, but I'm not sure that's the case. I'm also not sure that they are as much of a threat as they're made out to be. And um, some of the paragraphs in the resolution, all right, I can understand that a federal judge has ruled that it should, that the wolf should not be taken off the endangered species list at this point. So I think that's where the conflict is. Wisconsin supposedly has too many wolves up north. Um, we have too many deer down here in Doe County as far as I'm concerned, but um, I'm not sure that the resolution states our true intent. You know, I certainly would want to support the northern counties that do have a problem, but, and that's not to say that we won't have the same problem in a few years, but it might be just a little premature at this time. Okay. Anybody else? I guess the question, one of the questions I had when I, when I looked at the number of counties that voted for this, it's kind of all over the board. I mean, they're saying seven counties say 350, 24 counties say 350 mm -hmm. or less, one is 50 or less, one is 100 or less, one is 80 or less. So how did they determine what their numbers were? Just a comment. Megan. I guess I'm unclear on why we would be um, support why we would be putting through a resolution as such based on the information that we currently have. Steve. Um, I think I think there's a an issue that, and I think that you know numbers should be left up to the experts. I mean we're not we're not the experts grant I'm sure helped you know you know put this together but we're not the experts. Um, I I would be 
in favor of this if we could maybe amend it to maybe take out line 15 through 17 and just take the numbers out of the you know out of the equation is that really is in the end is going to be something the DNR I guess we can all make these resolutions that to be honest I don't think it really matters what what the wording says because the DNR is the one that's going to decide what the numbers are in the end <coughs> I don't think there's going to be a wolf hunt in Door County anytime soon Sorry, Ken. Wait, Ken. I understand the comments but you have to understand a federal judge somewhere is not the expert the w the DNR is the expert and they have set uh, numbers what is acceptable and they had wolf hunts and they are the experts the federal judge took it away from us what we're doing here is saying we recognize that there is a situation involved that could become problematic for the entire state you don't wait until your car blows up before you take it in to have it uh, maintained okay you, you you take care of it and this yes you're right there there's no problem with wolves and I don't feel afraid to go out uh, in my yard because there are wolves around there won't be a wolf hunt in Door County but I know a lot of people up north and it, it is a bad situation up there and and it's getting worse and what this resolution is saying is that we are on board let's let the DNR decide put the numbers out there and control the herd the way they see fit take it away from the federal judges I just have a question lines 30 and 31 they talk about the DNR and its partners implementing meaningful population controls so are they talking about a um, controlled hunt or so many license <coughs> to hunt a wolf would be issued are they talking about transplanting do we know the answers to those questions There was a wolf hunt mm -hmm. until a federal judge decided he thought wolves were a neat animal to see and put the kibosh on that hunt, took the control away from the DNR. So, and, and the numbers, yeah, the numbers, I, I, won't, I won't disagree that the numbers right now are arbitrary. That, that is just for your information. That's what it's up, that's what, uh, this came from Grant that he had checked out these, <laughs> no, 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 let me finish. This, Grant told me he got this from, from the resolutions that were out there, and he listed the numbers that were there. You're right, I don't have any idea how many wolves can be allowed in a certain county or wherever, all right? But the DNR does, the DNR does. Supervisor Fisher, I had no hand in drafting this. <laughs> you did. You told me you got this. No, I, I never received this and didn't see it until it was on the county board or LCC agenda. <coughs> Someone's calling me. What is that? You own the Not this resolution. This resolution is what you provided. This was a state, as part of the communication, they provided a standard resolution that's being circulated. So in essence what we did is we took that wording and actually Lori worked with Grantis and taking in essence copying and re putting it into our format. But we didn't change anything that was no. provided for as a standard template for the No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I but I but you did I didn't draft this. This is the information that was out there, and all I'm getting at is those it's numbers. It's a boilerplate resolution. Right, that we put right. And those numbers are out by different counties that have decided this number, or that number, and yeah, the county boards aren't experts at this. What they're asking for, bottom line, what they're asking for, is that we support the DNR on setting population goals for the wolf population, and they'll come up with the way to achieve those goals is what we're what we're asking here I, oops. just uh <clears throat> again this may that add us i mean i understand what some of the discussion is but to me the 
If you're looking at the resolution itself, the to me the whereas's are providing this information of what has been done. So, for example, uh, Supervisor Jones, you brought up the 15, 16, 17. Again, that's just a statement of saying what's been done in other areas. So it's just a statement of, of fact about what other counties have done. I think to me where the proof in the pudding is, is when now we say now there be resolved, that's what we're saying our opinion. And I think that's where, as a board, you need to look at what you want to state as your opinion. So to me it would be, obviously it does state that on line 27. You know, from the line above, it says the county board advises Wisconsin to approve a winter, I'm sorry, an overwinter minimum uh, count goal of 350 or less. So that's our recommendation on our opinion of what we think the wolf population should be. That's what's stated there. Then it says, again, then there's obviously the three below. So the first parts, I think, are just stating what's been done or facts that we have received. But, you know, the other four actually stating what our what we think as a county we're passing on in terms of our beliefs. So I think that's what you want to also focus on. Let me just make a correction. Actually, that that was the line that I thought we could eliminate uh, 26, 27, 28 of people were concerned about being involved in managing the herd, mm -hmm. which should be left up to the DNR. Right, and if you want to change it, put those words in, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with whatever you do with this. I just bring it up. I know it's a, uh, a cause for uh, major concern in northern counties, and <coughs> that makes it our concern because it is, after we went through our seminar at the state meeting, the DNR admitted that those numbers are growing all over the state. And and the bottom line is it says, uh, 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 Wisconsin, uh, be it further resolved, 38 and 39, that the Door County Board favors management of Wisconsin wolves by the state of Wisconsin, not the federal government. Because And the state of Wisconsin would mean the DNR. That's all that's being asked for here. So if you think the DNR should manage the wolf population, fine, pass it. If you think they should not manage it, uh, then vote against it. That's that's all there is to it. Make it. I'm not hearing that that's all that this resolution says, though. With all due respect to the DNR, if we are going to be putting our stamp as a county on such a thing, then I would want the presentation of those facts so we all understand what we are putting our stamp on for that support, if we were to support such a thing. Mark? Oh, I was going to make an amendment to strike out 26, 27, and 28. <laughs> I would second yeah, that second. amendment. Not knowing what the, excuse me, not knowing what the current numbers are to just say the goal of 350, I'm guessing with this um, resolution, comparing it to 1999 and then 2007 is where the DNR is going with, but not knowing cur current data statistics, I'm just not sure if I can comfortably put a number on it. And line six and seven does say they're gonna review and revise, so I'll undo right. it. Right. John? Can there be discussion on an amendment? I was just gonna ask Grant that. Yes. yes. Okay. My personal opinion here is this is a compromise. There are those people that don't want you to shoot any wolves, and there's those people that want you to shoot them all. And this is a compromise between the two. And, 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 and the numbers here are, they don't mean, I can't say that word. But, but anything. Anything, yeah. Uh, it, it's just a compromise to those that don't want any shot and those that want them all shot. And, and that's what we're trying to do here to come to a compromise. And, and you have to pick a number, otherwise, somebody's going to say, well, you don't have a number in there. So that, that's, that's my opinion on this. Biz. <clears throat> I don't think that there's a problem here in Door County has already been stated with this, but I do think there is a problem in the Wisconsin northern counties. And I can't tell you of how many people own property in northern Wisconsin, whether it be Pembine, Dunbar, that whole area up north, or hunt up there on state land. 
I would think that all those people would want us to support this and let it up to the DNR and the number because when you read in the paper, all the restrictions that they have up there, you can't, can't kill any does because they're, they're, they're tickled pink if they even see a deer up there. A fawn doesn't have a chance to live when, when they got a predator like that around. So I think, I think that Door County should support this. Not that we're going to have a hunt in Door County. I don't think we have the problem. But northern Wisconsin does have a big problem. And the UP, I know people that have property up in Lance, Michigan. You can't shoot any does up there. Just You can take out a buck, but you can't shoot a doe because there isn't hardly any deer. They have such a big wolf problem. And it's getting out of hand. So I'm, I'm going to support this, and, and uh, I, I, I think we should on behalf of all the people that own property and hunt in those northern counties. Joel? I was just going to say, I just did a quick thing real quick, and it, the 350 number is what the DNR is recommending, and there's more than double that in the state right now, what they're saying. So all these numbers are coming mm -hmm. from data that the DNR is recommending. So it's right in this article. So. And they're counting. Dan? Well, first, I don't think we have herds of wolves. I think they're packs. And I think the one, like Ken right. says, the last two lines are what is really important. Uh, we want Wisconsin to take over the wolf management, not the federal government. That's the bottom line. The rest is subject to change, but if the bottom line is followed, those numbers will change over the years. Megan? I agree that there is a wolf problem in northern Wisconsin. I have done the research, I read the article, I looked further. That's not what I'm questioning here. What I'm questioning is where as a county we are putting our support with this resolution as it is worded. And if we are not fully informed, and I appreciate Joel looking up some data quickly, but if we're not fully informed, what we're taking a look at here by giving that power back to Wisconsin, taking it out of federal power, that in the past, again with all due respect to the DNR, that in the past is what's caused eradication in the first place of other species in other states, in this state, so on and so forth. So I feel like we should be very careful as a county board as to what we are putting forth as support. All I'll say is the DNR had absolutely no uh, responsibility with the eradication of the wolf population. And the federal government didn't reintroduce the wolves to, Dark County, to uh, Wisconsin either. So. I have a question for our Corporation Council. If, um, if the DNR wishes to challenge the federal court ruling, they would have to appeal it, correct? The, the state would have to the appeal. State, yes, the yeah. state on behalf of the DNR would have to appeal the federal court decision. That's a, quite a lengthy process, isn't it? Or it could be? Could that take years? My understanding of that decision, and I haven't looked at it lately because it happened so, a while ago, is that it would require change at the federal level in legislation. That, uh, that, so, to uh, empower I, each of the states to correct. control their wolf or whatever population. Okay, so we have an amendment on the floor <coughs> that would remove line 26, 27, and 28 which reads, now therefore be it resolved, the Door County Board advises Wisconsin approving wolf overwinter minimum count of 350 or less than the next revision of Wisconsin wolf plan. Any other discussion on that amendment? So we'll do a voter board. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> then that is what we're voting on, correct? We're voting on the, the deletion of, of those deletion three of 26, lines. The deletion of 26, 27, and 28. Okay. That's the amendment. Right, just the amendment. Okay. <coughs> so we're voting on the deletion of those three lines.
<coughs> that has, the amendment has passed 12 yes, 8 no, 1 absent. Okay. So now we're back to the original <coughs> resolution minus 26, 27, 28. So we, we, we have removed the 350 number. So now we're voting on the resolution basically without a number. Authorizing the state to put their plan, if I, re, if I restate this correctly, we're, we're authorizing the Wisconsin DNR, or suggested that the DNR go ahead and implement population control in Wisconsin to bring the minimum wolf overwinter count to their goal levels. And that we requested DNR not relocate wolves that have caused problems in Wisconsin or other areas. And that the Door County Board favors management of Wisconsin wolves by the state of Wisconsin, not the federal government. Okay. Any, think I got that right? Everybody's kind of nodding their head? Okay. All right. So if there's no other discussion, we'll go to the voter board on this one. Passed. Go to 19 yes, one no, one absent. Okay. We're going to move into ordinances. Before we get started, I'll explain the report. We'll just do a voice vote. Ordinances will do the roll call vote. Mr. Fisher. All right. And before I even started that, I've got to apologize. I never thought asking for support on this for other counties would be so contentious on the wolves. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I'd like to make a mo let's see, make a motion to accept the report on the text amendment uh, uh, for chapter ordinance chapter 14. I'll second that. You want to explain what it is? It's just the report. It's just. Okay. Uh, I'm just asking to accept the report. And when we get done with that and we get to the uh, ordinance, then Mariah will come up and explain it all. If, although if you, you're the boss. That's fine. If you want the explanation now, that's fine. Well, usually we, we at least say what the name of it is in the report. <laughs> okay, the report. Uh, there's a uh, petition. Zoning Ordinance Chapter 14, Communication Support Structures and Related Facilities to Create Section 14.04. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> ordinance 2017-03. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I'll make a motion to accept Ordinance 2017-03. Uh, text amendments to the Door County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 14, and ask Mariah to come up and give us a detailed explanation on this. Okay, you made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. It's not going to be detailed, um, <laughs> unless you really want it. Um, as you know, we already have a chapter in the zoning ordinance that regulates telecommunication towers, which is what we used to call them. The state in the past um, couple of years, Grant probably knows exactly when, added some provisions to the statutes, which are in a different section than what the chapter was adopted under originally, having to do with broadband <laughs> projects. And basically, if you get your ordinance certified as a broadband forward ordinance, then either any municipalities or for-profits or nonprofits in the county that are applying for the state funds to help um, with broadband installation projects score better on their grant applications. So we're, we're just essentially adding a new section to an existing chapter where <coughs> broadband towers will be treated somewhat differently in terms of process. And we'll hopefully get certified. Questions? Discussion? If not, we'll go to the voter board.
That has passed on the vote 20 yes. Zero no, one absent. Report to the amendment to the zoning map of Sturgeon Bay. Beeson. Mr. Fisher. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, make a motion to accept the report for rezoning by Ivan and Joanne Beeson uh, from the town of Sturgeon Bay to rezone 75 acres from S date or ES to General A. And the explanation is the rezoning request is being sought to establish a solid waste facility which would allow dredge spoils to be placed on site. Dredge spoils are considered solid waste and are not allowed to be placed in the estate zoning district. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance number 2017-04, amendment to the zoning map of Sturgeon Bay. And I'll make a motion to accept the amendatory zoning ordinance 2017-04. Second. And when this came before us on uh, RPC, I asked why uh, the Beesons were asking for this because they should have had a uh, quarry reclamation plan. But I was informed that, that when that process started, this quarry was, all, was qualified or did qualify as an abandoned quarry, so they did not have a reclamation plan. Now they're changing it so they can take the dredge spoils and fill it in. They wouldn't have to fill it in, but they would like to. And it would, uh, uh, the Rowan Salvage is going to dredge out more of their, more space for the docks. And the soil's been tested. It's acceptable. Uh, I believe it's the DNR, right, that has to okay that. And they have that. That can be dredged out and put, uh, on that property, but the Beesons need a, uh, a zoning change in order to facilitate that. Any questions? Linda. Were there any objections from neighboring property <clears throat> owners? Susie, I don't know. Were there? No. no, I don't no. remember that there were. And they this, actually this, were supporting others from them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the town feels this is a chance to reclaim an old, old, old quarry that right now isn't good for anything and so over time it will hopefully be reclaimed anybody else that will go to the voter board That has passed in the vote of 20 yes, zero no, one absent. Thank you. New business. Oral committee reports. Anybody care to give an oral report? <coughs> Review of committee minutes. Review of vouchers, claims, and bills. Do you know which one I have looked at this month? I looked at what we spent for lodging at the legislative days. Anybody tell me what that was? A lot. Just a question. <laughs> Announcements. Next regular county board meeting, June 27th at 9 a.m. <clears throat> the county board parks tour is this Thursday, May 25th. Starts at 8 a.m. at the airport. We'll conclude at 4 o'clock. Dan. Did, Ken, did you find out whether um, Cane Island is accessible? Yes. Well, it, it depends on the wind, but yes, it will be. It should be accessible. Yeah. Okay. So we're supposed to bring boots? Yes. So don't bring but, boots. Well, potentially, <laughs> if, if it gets really windy, you might have to. <laughs> Tony ankle. Take your shoes off. Tony, yeah. Tony, you know, ankle, knee deep. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on slippery rocks. I, I was are. out there. I was out there on Sunday, and and it was windy, and we're talking about probably like that. So we got waiters. <laughs> It depends on the wind, okay, yeah, to be honest. Totally. Came up foot and a half Biz? I don't want to throw us off schedule, but it appears to me that we're going to, we're going to be, um, 
going up Highway 57 to Cana Island after we leave Cave Point, which means we'd be going through Bailey's Harbor. And I would like the bus to at least swing in Ridges Road and go to the Bailey's Harbor Ridges Park. And not that we would all get off there, but at least drive through it. Because I'm going to have an item on the next agenda, and, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to explain it here at County Board, but I could mention it on the bus of what I would like to see done there. And uh, like I said, I don't want to go get off schedule, but if, but we're going right by the place, and if they just drive through it, so that the County Board knows, you know what what's like. It's a very very popular park okay. in right. the summer. Right. Very popular. We actually can't discuss it, I believe, actually, on the bus, correct? Not, not on not, the bus. Not on the bus. Right. Correct. Right. 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 <laughs> WC annual conference on your calendar, September 24th through 26th. No. <clears throat> Our meeting per diem code for today is 916. Okay, 916. We're now going to recess to go to 916 North 14th Avenue. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, just really quick before you start getting up, I just talked with Wayne. Um, they have a, a space that's kind of reserved. There's some orange fencing that's kind of by the senior center if you're looking for a place to park. And then on the south side of the property, again, it's going to be south side will be again towards the, our existing senior center. There'll be a black canopy. Looks like it's not raining yet, but there's a black canopy that'll be set up with the shovels and hats and everything. So that's where you want to report. And if you could, if we could target there by 11:30, that'd be our goal. And then after that, we'd be heading towards lunch. Right. So, so. we're going to go to lunch at the senior center. The chair will be paying for lunch. <coughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we are recessed. <laughs> so we meet out there. But not an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> <laughs>